Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone this morning here to worship at the First Presbyterian Church of Everett. Uh, we are glad that you're here worshiping with us, whether here in person or if you're joining with us online. I'd just like to highlight a couple of announcements as we begin this morning. Uh, first is last week we donated 364 pounds of food for the Volunteers of America Food Bank here in our community. That pushes our total for the year to 3,630 pounds. So congratulations, awesome job. Thank you uh, for your, your donations, which makes an impact here in our community. Uh, just uh, a couple other things. There's a community sing-along here that the Port Gardner Bay uh, group is putting on at 3 o'clock. If you're interested, it's right here in our sanctuary. Uh, Teresa Good continues to collect uh, today donations for Christmas at Bethany. There's an announcement in our bulletins. Uh, the Priscilla Circle meets tomorrow, Monday, December 11th at 1130 a.m. in the Calvin Lounge. It's going to be a potluck, so all women are invited to join there. Our Chris, we're gearing up for Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve is a couple of Sundays away. We're having worship at 10 a.m. Our choir is going to be doing our cantata, which we always look forward to every year. And then in the evening, we have a Christmas uh, coffee time at 545, and then worship for our candlelight service at 7 p.m. We hope you join us for those activities. Uh, be thinking about into the new year, uh, we have our annual congregational meeting uh, February 4th. Uh, so that's a time where we uh, look at our report for this year, where we elect officers to serve and where we uh, uh, sort of continue to push forward with our vision for the upcoming year. And if you are a part of a group in the church and you have an annual report, those submissions are due via email or hard copy to me by January 5th. So uh, just as a note, there is Sunday school today at 1130 in Calvin Lounge. Uh, if you're interested in having lunch with me tomorrow, Monday at noon, and our Thursday Bible study continues on the 14th using our Zoom platform at 4 p.m. So there's a lot going on. Also today um, is Astrid's birthday. So happy birthday, Astrid. Yes, uh, we're grateful for your birthday today. And uh, we are going to be singing a little bit later on in the service uh, after the passing of the peace, we'll have the doxology. The words will be on the screen, as well as uh, we have these wonderful FPCE Sings binders. We're going to be singing number 10, which is I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. The, the music is in here. It's a couple pages in, number 10, so just a couple pages in. Uh, there are five verses here. Th those verses will also be on the screens. Uh, so during the passing of the peace, just know that either have this handy or ready to go, uh, but we will be doing a couple of songs, and one of them is an extra song, not in our hymnal, that can be found in this binder uh, throughout the pews. So now I'm going to invite Bob Barron to come and lead us uh, into our call to worship. Good morning. This is uh, Psalms 34, 11 through 14, and 85, 8 through 13. If you join with me and stand. Come, O oh children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desire life and covets many days to enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking out. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, and those who turn to him in their hearts. So his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, and his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love. Surely his salvation, just a minute. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. 
The steadfast love and faithfulness will meet righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. That's when you read your notes. You don't read the paper. The Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make the path for his steps. Okay, yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. Last Sunday, we lit the candle of hope. Remembering that hope will, comes in Christ. Together, please. God of peace, our world is full of angry voices calling for vengeance, calling for retribution, mass justice, calling for destruction as a lie for peace. But we know that true peace comes from you. You are available for all we seek. If we follow you, we seek a world peace the world where nations come together. Our war is memory, and together we eat at one table. May peace light your way to this world that desperately needs it. Amen. Uh, heard the herald angels sing number 31 in your hymnal.
seated. A prayer of confession. God promises forgiveness through Jesus Christ. On this second Sunday of Advent, let us approach God in humility and faith. Eternal God, John the Baptist prepares the way by calling upon us to repent. We have failed to share as we should. We have failed to honor the poor and the oppressed. We have failed to bear fruit worthy of your salvation. Have mercy upon us, God. Open us to your word and your way. Clear our minds of holiday distractions and busy tasks. Fill our hearts with the humility we need to bear and receive the message you intend for us today. Take a moment for silent personal confession and reflection. With joy, let us give thanks to the Lord in Jesus. We are forgiven. Now together with sisters and brothers, let us pray as Jesus, Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, let us pass the peace. May the peace of Christ be with you.
Thank you, choir. You all did a great job singing out of uh, the new binder. And thank you, choir, for helping to lead that as well. You know, those, those songs in those binders, just as a reminder, um, throughout this year, our worship committee and uh, Steve and Gary and I and the worship team have really been listening to the hymns that you've wanted to sing, and they're not all in our hymnal. And so this uh, folder is a beginning. We're going to add more next year. This is a beginning to add some of the hymns that we love and that have deep meaning into our worship service that might not be directly in our hymnal. Our scripture today comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. The prophet says, Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. And the uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field, the grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem. Herald of good news, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. The Lord will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This past Wednesday, Sonia Beardsley and I uh, visited Hugh and Jackie Minor. We shared communion and had a wonderful time together. However, my cell phone was blowing up. And usually I leave it in my pocket, I just feel the vibrations. But I was concerned that something had happened, so I peeked. And my good friends were in a frenzy. And this happens occasionally, usually over maybe some sporting news or something uh, trivial. So I didn't pay much of attention to it, even though my phone kept on buzzing. After our visit and I had returned home, I checked the 30 or so text messages from my guys. They were reaching out to our friend Jeff, who still lives in Las Vegas due to the shooting on UNLV's campus. Immediately, I thought of one of Peyton's classmates who was studying at UNLV, and Vicki texted their family. And I called my parents just to make sure that everyone I knew was okay, and they are. Of course, for three faculty members and their families and loved ones, and even for the shooter's family that will not have to deal with the fallout, life will not be the same. We know the ripple effects of violence and can imagine them radiating through the university student community, the lives of the police, the EMTs, the other teachers, the doctors and nurses, plus the fact that in October 2017, the largest mass shooting in our country took place on the south end of the Strip during a country music festival, and that would trigger frustration and memories throughout Las Vegas, and those ripples move out beyond one location and travel around the world. Indeed, we think about those ripples whenever we hear about a shooting or a tragedy. The problem is the non-shock of this shooting. 
Because I did not know this, but the day before, six people were killed in a shooting in Austin, Texas, and I had no clue about that. According to the Gun Violence Archive from November, October, excuse me, like two months ago, we have had 627 mass shootings this year after that gunman in Lewiston, Maine. The mass shootings are defined as an incident in which four or more victims are shot or killed. With these statistics in 2021, we had 690 mass shootings. In 2022, we decreased down to 645. Yet, again, in October, we are on pace to have a record year in 2023. I don't mean to be cavalier, but it just it hurts my head, to be honest. And, and I know these statistics are staggering. And I just love how at the every end of our, every article ends that, you know, when the American people have had enough, then policy will change. All right. When we've had enough. And I know I may be getting too political for some, even myself, but I get spiraling in my brain when these things happen, right? And even I take a walk or try to meditate or do anything in my mind to get off these events, it is difficult. I do not let go of them easily. On Wednesday and Thursday, my mind spun out of control thinking about gun violence in our country. And when I spin out of control, then I think about, you know, the horrific bombing and killing of Palestinians in Gaza, and true, my mind continues to spin because we know that that violence started as a response to the horrific killing of Israelis by the terrorist group Hamas. And my mind does not stop there because I think about the war in Ukraine. I think about the clashing groups of people in other countries that barely make our news radar, even though hundreds die or suffer or are displaced because of the need for power. And this may not make sense, but I'm just telling you how my mind works. And I'm speaking really fast because this is how my mind actually works inside my brain. And I circle back to issues in our country of racism, sexism, injustice, corruption, the lack of funding for employment.